Tom Nappy from HCAM News, joined by Michelle Murdoch and Jim Kleinkoff from the Hopkinton Independent. And we are here with Board of Selectmen candidate Amon Hadry. Amon, how are you doing today? Good, very well. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, now, the Board of Selectmen is the highest office in town. What motivated you to run for the Board of Selectmen, and why do you think you are qualified to fill the position? All right. So, <coughs> um, you know, the, the Board of Selectmen are definitely, uh, you know, it's an executive um, a branch of the, uh, of the town. And what prompted me to run, uh, there's several reasons why I decided to run. Um, I've been willing to um, get back to the community for the last couple of years, but due to some personal commitments, um, time didn't allow me to do it. But uh, just recently, I uh, got a lot of support and I had an opportunity to run. So I just thought that this would probably be a, a good starting point, although it's right, uh, starting right on the top. But uh, you know, again, what I feel that you know, every, every position in town is very important. You know, as long as you have the right skill sets, the right experience, and the right decision making, um, everyone should actually come out and, uh, and, um, and vote. And again, um, I think the, uh, you know, there's no uh, uh, prerequisites or to pre-qualify for any position. So uh, that was, that's one of the reasons why it really prompted me to, uh, to, for to go for this uh, position. All right. Just, just follow up. Sure, uh, absolutely. Quickly, Aman, um, when, uh, when you say it, it is the top office, that takes me back to um, my days at Metro West Daily News, where we would every spring interview dozens and dozens of candidates for yeah. elected office. And, and uh, we'd start with the basics. What we would look at um, was obviously, um, were you a registered voter? How many town meetings had you been to? And how many mm -hmm. um, lower elected boards mm -hmm. had you been part of before running for what is the highest office in town? Correct. Um, so that, um, you know, do you, uh, do you feel that the learning curve is going to be a problem? <coughs> so <coughs> to answer your questions, um, I have not run for public office before. This is my first time running. Um, I have not um, um, attended any, um, any meetings, um, and, and I have been registered to vote, but I haven't voted. But again, going back to your question about running for the top office, um, in my eyes, it's the experience that counts what you're going to bring to the up to the table. I mean, I have over you know, 15 years of experience. I've worked with budgets. Um, I do a lot of projections. And if I can bring my experience as a uh, selectman, work with the selectman to try to um, elevate a discussion and uh, bring uh, possible more leadership, I think that's wha what the experience comes in um, um, uh, in that. But, um, and again, just like any other job, when you, when you accept a new job, it's a new role, you learn in the role, but you bring, you're coming with the experience uh, to that. So I think the transition is, uh, would be um, easier. <coughs> Thanks. All right, Michelle, you have the next question. Okay, so um, this ties in somewhat mm -hmm. to what you just answered, but what is the biggest single challenge facing Hopkinton, say, in the town in the, in the coming year? Yep. And what type, in addition to that, what role do the selectmen play in that challenge? All right. So <coughs> um, I'll, I'll, sp I'll answer your second question first, if, if I may. Sure. Um, I mean, there are the this board of selectmen are um, a board that are policy decision makers, and they will they vote and make po uh, decide on what is best for the town. But some of the issues that I've I've uh, I'll just highlight a few issues, um, uh, issues what I see. I mean, we have seen a rapid growth of residential in the past uh, few years, and there has been a um, an increase um, in the development. But at some point, I feel that it's going to start. Uh, decline and they will be capped at some point. If not now, in the next five, 10 years, there will be a cap at some point. And that is where uh, the question arises that we have to maintain the open space and preserve the heritage of Hopkinton. But um, keeping the growth in mind, um, I think I just recently saw that there's in, that in 2019, 2020, there's, there's gonna be a decline in the growth. So are we prepared for that? Um, I just wanna touch on a few numbers, if I may. Mm -hmm. Um, and so going to the fiscal year 2018, 
uh, there is the, the sources of funds that they have projected is going to be $77 million uh, in sources of fund for 2018. And the budget that we have, for, uh, the operating budget that we have for 2018 is $82 million, right? Which automatically creates a deficit of over four, four and a half million dollars, all right? My, my concern, and this is something that I would really like to sit down with the board and get more information, that if we have this deficit next year, next year is this de deficit going to actually increase or decrease in line with the growth or um, um, in, in, in line with the growth that, that we are seeing. Um, if, if it is going to increase, what other sources are we to try and try to, uh, to, try to bring down the, the, uh, the deficit? Secondly, um, the, the budget itself is almost $82 million. And um, I think over 50 or 51 percent goes straight to the Hopkinton Public Schools. Another 10 or 12 percent is goes to the uh, the pension and the uh, the employee benefits. That's a good chunk goes right there, and we're left with almost 30, 35 percent of the of the budget right there. And again, it's it's a very conservative budget. They've done a wonderful putting it together, but are we really ready for this 30, 35 percent budget? Will it really sustain the growth that we are seeing in the coming years? Yeah. And uh, this is just some things that, you know, I'm just sort of uh, trying to understand a little bit more. And again, once you have more support from the boards, uh, you get your familiar, and, and that's where I feel with my experience. Look, there's, there's gonna be a lot of challenges when, uh, and going back to your, your original question, there's gonna be definitely a lot of challenges along the way. No one has this ma magic wand that this, they're just gonna wake up in the morning and everything is just gonna be fine. You know, it, we're gonna face these challenges every day. And at least for myself, I mean, I'd like to discuss, you know, and to share a few of the challenges that I faced in my, in my career, in my personal career, in my work career. Um, I faced a lot of challenges, uh, and what I did was I, um, you know, I structured, I planned, I made the right decision, and implemented. When I, when I was doing a little bit consultancy work for sm uh, small businesses, um, I came in a lot of unique situations. We had com uh, companies that had solid revenue, but they were not profitable. And that was very, very uh, uh, you know, unique. And that's when I had to really dissect to see what are the sources we could, w uh, we could bring in. We try to spread out the projections and try to increase the gross profit percentage. It sort of happened over a period of time. It is possible. But again, if we just try to focus and see the longer picture, and project according to the line of the growth. Um, another big challenge that actually I just recently um, faced is, I mean, I've been banking for quite a few years and, uh, and I, I came up through the ranks. I started all the way down and I worked up. Um, but after I, I ended my, my business um, or banking experience at, at the bank, um, just two years ago I had, a, I had an opportunity to work uh, at a startup company. That was the biggest ch challenge I had. Being, it was a pre-revenue company, no revenue, they had limited funds, and they were gonna be probably burnt out in two to three months, the, the burn rate was so high. So I took on this challenge, and it, mid, 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 it was a mid-career for me, and I have a daughter in college, it was a very big decision, but I took that on. And what I did is, you know, I, um, um, I created budgets for them, uh, five, 10 years, in line with the projections, and uh, you know, went out. I started. I got the business for them. Signed contracts for this business, and uh, you know, I raised capital for the company. I mean, we, we got our seri Series A funding. So, what I'm trying to say, I mean, this is uh, a year ago. This co this company was almost invisible, and all of a sudden, we have you know, big major press release coming out from this company. I will take most most of the the credit because uh, you know, I, I designed the structure very well, and uh, and that's how we got a very good funding. So what I'm trying to say is, going back to what you're saying, yes, there are gonna be challenges, but um, you know, if you have the right team working with you with the right boards, I think you can ac um, accomplish um, a lot. Anyone have a follow? I All right, go ahead. <laughs> I do. Um, so when we talked about budgeting, you brought up the word deficit. Mm -hmm. And typically in the town government, th there isn't a deficit. It's a balanced budget every year. Mm -hmm. They have to get there somehow. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Selectmen typically, at the beginning of the the cycle Correct. put out a budget message Correct. and it sort of sets the priorities. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about priorities before, they were kind of 
you know, they're vague. You don't know what they're going to be. But uh, one of the ones that comes up a lot mm -hmm. in the budget message is, um, are we looking at level funded or level services? Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm going to ask you, are you a level funded or a level services kind of guy? I would say um, a, a bit of both, maybe. Um, uh, we have to look at where, th where the sources are coming in from. And uh, I, I think I haven't really given much thought about it, but I would say I'll, I'll probably right in the center. Um, services, yes, to see uh, the revenue plus the, the funds from, again, if we look at the, like the state aid gives us, what, like 10% um, um, every year from the funding. Uh, so we need something to offset that if in case that the state aid goes down. So I would look at all the sources before I would probably uh, comment on that uh, on that question. I have a follow. Um, obviously, you've got some, some strong finance and, and budget skills. And while um, the Board of Selectmen ha mm -hmm. may have some peripheral uh, dealings with the budget, um, one of your Facebook Post mentions um, the school budget and the school committee. Mm -hmm. The selectmen have absolutely no, no, no things. Mm -hmm. control Correct, over yes. the school mm -hmm. budget by state law. Correct. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely right. I, I totally agree with you. Um, again, I just feel that the school, uh, but uh, they do a wonderful job p putting this uh, this budget together. And uh, you know when w you know w when the uh, when they go back to the board to say that you know we need a increase of five six percent versus three percent. That's the only. Um, um, uh, that's when I agree with them, but I, I totally understand. There's no, there's no uh, um, uh, decision as far as the committee is concerned. Absolutely, yes. All right, Jim, you have the next question regarding right. the caucus system. I do. Yes. <laughs> um, Hopkinton is one of very few mm -hmm. towns in the Commonwealth that has uh, town government. Involved in in Democrats, Republicans, mm -hmm. and caucus have mm -hmm. has caucuses. Um, from your point of view, what what part do um, the you know the Democratic parties and their philosophies play um, in town government policy? Uh, it's a good question. My, my background, um, for many years, I don't know if most of you know, for many years, uh, the reason why it's, it's difficult for me answering that question at this moment is, you know, for 20, 25 years, I, I, I was a Republican for many years. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd moderate roads, and as I tell my friends, I'm a reborn Democrat right now. So I'm still trying to, right in the center, uh, and I'm trying to lean more over to the Democrats, but again, you know, when some of the issues we have saw at the at the town meeting, I thought the selectmen had some great proposals, and I voted in favor for that. Uh, you know, with the, with there was there was a tax issue too. I think uh, it should be um, um, uh, looked into a little bit more carefully. But generally, I would probably consider myself more of a moderate at this time. But maybe if you ask this question in the next one year, it would probably be a little bit different. <laughs> a follow, um, just kind of to then sure. get. You know, on your philosophy, sure. Um, you know, limited government and so forth. Um, I believe I n I saw you at the recent town meeting, mm -hmm. and I believe you said you were at the one in the fall. Uh, uh, no, I was not. Oh, you weren't. No, it okay. was. I uh, I'll take ownership of that. It was um, it was mis um, a mistake on my part, and okay. I and I and absolutely was not there on the fall. I just attended one, which was the the one in March, I believe, for the special elec elections. Well maybe yeah, that was, well that's uh, that was later. That was the charter. Was that? I'm sorry. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Right. But absolutely. But that but that was on two nights. Do you remember which night you went? Um, for the vote, um, I don't remember. Okay. What were but the issues at the meeting? You. Were I just at? went to to vote for uh, for Connor for to be an elected position. Okay. That okay. was the only reason why okay. I was there. How do you? How did you feel about the charter revision? I uh, at I did not I haven't I d I'm not familiar with that right now so right. I cannot answer that question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the board of uh, the Mass Mutual, uh, yeah. or excuse me, the Mass Municipal Association, defines uh, the selectmen as a team. Uh, <laughs> the board of Sel the board of selectmen must work as a team to help make decisions yes. and decide what is best for the town. How well do you work with others and can you give specific examples? Right. So um, <coughs> you know this. 
nowadays, I mean, this is all about team building. We're, we're, we're living in an era where everything is team building, you know, and it's not a one-mind show anymore. It's support and then you deliver. Um, for example, um, w when I started my, uh, my banking career, I started way at the bottom. And uh, the first year I was given a, a target of $5 million and I almost cried that day. But um, I could have just walked out as a, you know, but the thing is, going back to what you said, um, the most logical thing was to start by building alliances with my partners. So I reached out to the wealth management, private park, uh, private uh, banking, the, uh, the commercial side, the CRE. Once I build your alliance, we get the support, get their, their input, then you go out and, and, you, and you start uh, implementing making decision makers. And I think if you use the same uh, concept in, in any job, unless you don't have the support, you cannot deliver. And in this case, with the Board of Selectmen, um, you know, there's uh, the, a bunch of very talented people who bring experience from, from different fields. And as, um, you know, I'm just bringing my experience, and if I can just help elevate the discussion a little bit more, I think that's, uh, that's how we, we, we should all work as a team, absolutely. All right. Uh, Jim, you have the next question regarding Eversource. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Hopkinton uh, appears to have a, an increasingly disproportionate footprint of the utility Eversource in Dallas, yep. specifically the gas arm. There is a, a proposal um, in West Hopkinton for a gas gate station um, near, the, near uh, Elmwood School and in the middle of a residential area mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, on the other side of town on Wilson Street, there is a proposal, I think there's a meeting tonight over at Faith Church mm -hmm. where Eversource is in town to talk about this uh, um, $150 million plan to build a liquefier mm -hmm that'll encompass about three acres of land. They're moving a, uh, what was a smaller one, building a it's much a bigger, bigger one. one. Uh, so the question is, what recourse does the town have when time after time Eversource goes, instead of coming through town boards, uh, Eversource goes to the State Department of U Public Utilities um, and usually uh, gets their way and, and gets approval with the town having no say. What recourse does the town have? <coughs> well, um, again, I just got familiar with this uh, just recently, so I cannot shine a lot of light on it. But I, I do know that the, that the residents uh, down at on Elmwood, it is a big concern. It's not only an environmental concern, it's also a public safety concern. It's really dense area. And, um, um, and as far as going to the, uh, I think we, it, although it's at the state level, I think we, we need to work closely with, uh, with, with Eversource and try to see where else we can accommodate them. And as far as the, um, uh, what you had mentioned, I'm not too familiar with that right now. I know there's, there's something there to the, the plans. The, the big gas ta tanks at the top, the, you know, LNG tanks. LNG tanks, yeah. Line. Again, I think that's um, an environmental issue, and uh, I think they have to be placed, um, um, revised, and see where else it could be placed. <coughs> right. Okay. All right, Michelle, you have the next question regarding the town's vision statement. Okay. So um, I, I guess my question, um, probably because you are new, is are you familiar with the town's vision statement? Um, and if not, it, it's Place my question. So I'm going to leave it at that. Are you, are you familiar with the town's vision statement? And, you know, it, it ties back to your goals and, and what you see for Hopkinson in the future, really. I mean, I see, I see, I mean, I, I don't know the exact words of what the, what the, uh, what the, what the vision is, but um, I mean, I see it's a, it's, it's a growing community. It's probably one of the best communities. Um, there's a lot of growth happening, and, um, you know, there is, the, the new talk about smart growth, smart, smart growth. I think we're heading in that direction, and um, um, keeping the the uh, preserving the community, the the uh, the sense of community, the heritage, and growing at the same time. I think that is probably what my vision is. Um, you know, there's definitely there's going to be obstacles on the way, but overall, um, I think that it's going to be one of the uh, most desirable 
uh, towns to live in, in in the near future. Follow up. Um, Hockenden has a town meeting form of government. I think town meeting is considered probably the purest mm -hmm. form of democracy because every year the entire, all the residents of, of the town are welcome. They don't all come, but they're welcome to come and, and each year vote on uh, the major priorities and so Correct. forth of the town. In Hopkinson, the town um, 10 years ago voted for a charter and uh, this year at that meeting we were discussing in March uh, uh, voted for changes. It was up for a mm -hmm. tenure or two and, they, and the charter committee worked for a year and presented changes. That was voted at town meeting and what, what the charter does is governs the, the rules and regulations by which the town operates. Mm -hmm. How familiar are you with the charter? I, um, I'm not too familiar with it um, right now but um, I'm um, I'm actually in the process of just starting uh, looking into it, but I'm not doing it right now. <coughs> Can I have one more follow-up question? Yeah. So um, a couple of times you, you've answered that you're not familiar with, but you plan to get familiar with certain things in right. town. So I guess my question is, what do you plan to do? Um, and it, it might go into your next question. I'm not trying to do that. But what, do you, what do you, steps are you taking, um, and do you have the time to go and learn what you need to learn so on the board of selectmen. right so as i said like like any other position you have to start from somewhere you know you can start from uh, from any board or a selectman but it's all a matter of, of how quick you adapt and how quick you learn you know people learn in a shorter time people learn in a quicker time mm -hmm. you know in, in 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 any role um i feel that i have the capacity to learn quickly and i'm getting familiar with stuff i'm meeting a lot of people who have given me some great input there is um, um and people have actually approached me. They want to sit down, they want to explain their issues. So I think I'm getting a lot of support. And again, it really comes down to me how, how familiarized I, I will be. But again, once you're in the role, once you have these um, decisions in front of you, then that's when your, the, your thinking process starts. <coughs> All right, and uh, Jim, we already kind of addressed the learning curve, but is there anything you wanted to add? Um, I'm going to do transparency. Um, I was at the uh, women's club meeting um, where um, everyone, all the candidates spoke. I think there were two, two themes that hit me at that meeting. One was tra uh, transparency, the other civility. I'm going to get into transparency first because a number of candidates <laughs> talked about pledging that they uh, there would be transparency in, in their service to the town. Um, I think you, you also uh, pledged that. Do you feel there isn't enough transparency at the moment? I think that, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else. I'll just speak for myself. Um, I think there is, there is transparency, but there's always room to improve this transparency. Um, I don't think it's a very big issue, but um, just, um, you know, as long as we, we provide the tools to the boards and to improve the, f uh, the, the flow of transparency. That is probably what my message is. For example, you know, just uh, uh, again, uh, some, I know there's some concerns from other candidates that you know, minutes are posted too late. I understand, but we have to post the minutes um, you know, ahead of time to the, to the community. And I think another thing was the, um, the technology part and on the town. It's not the town's fault. But I think we would like we should provide a better technology um, uh, and improve their upgrade the system, um, so at least the the community is is well um, um, aware of it. That came at <coughs> the town meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, second part of the question was kind of an elephant in the room. Um, your in your final statement, you talked about pledging to you know um, push for diversity and so forth, and and you know what you had to bring, but you also, at the same time, uh, made a statement about your opponent that mm -hmm. I believe you said I could, uh, yeah. you know, well my opponent who's been in government 15 years and has done nothing. Good. Yes. I will, uh, you know what, I will, <laughs> believe me, now, you know, I'm, this is something that I, I regret saying, and I shouldn't have said it, it was, um, unscripted, it was not in the script, and it just came out. But I have, again, I respect all selectmen. 
they all come with a lot of um, hard work. They've put a lot of community work in here. And I and if I did, and I reached out to quite a few people, and I've and I asked them if you know I offended them anyway, but it came out the wrong way, and I should not have said that. It, but I said it with good intentions, believe it or not. But it's, it was said with good intentions. But um, uh, as far as the diversity thing, you know, uh, I understand that you know I'm I'm running as a minority, but you know we have to keep in mind that running as Amon Hydri, who's being experienced as a selectman candidate who just happens to be a minority, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm not running on a min minority or diversity ticket, <laughs> you know. But I would like to see, um, you know, there's uh, this, this new candidate, uh, there are a lot of new candidates, a lot of talented new candidates. And um, I think this is a new change that we're seeing. Um, I, was, um, I was actually reached out by uh, someone from the community who gave me the opportunity to run. And um, I would probably do the same for someone else to give an opportunity. But uh, but I don't think diversity and minority is 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 the uh, my, my theme for running. It's what what I can bring to the table, uh, Vince. Yeah, <coughs> and, and uh, I was just kind of quoting you. But but since you brought up the the minority aspect, let me have you mm -hmm. um, witnessed or been the object of of anything disparaging your minority status? Has it ever been an issue as as far as this campaign or anything goes? Or for that matter, um, in 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 the in anything in the town, have you experienced any? Uh, uh, I don't know how to put this, but basically, have you sensed it was an issue to anyone that you've dealt with in the town? Um, I've uh, my years living in Hopkinton. I think I've been very fortunate, very blessed, and I speak for myself and my family. We have never ever felt any sort of resentment from anyone. We've always been very welcomed in every way. People from all walks of life have reached out to us and touched us any way. So to answer your question, no. You know, we have never found any uh, resentment. Um, there's always a handful that you sense, you know, here and there, randomly maybe, but that is maybe they're just having a bad day, but I wouldn't really blame them for that. But um, I think I've been very fortunate that uh, living in Massachusetts, uh, this has never ever been an issue at all. All right. Anyone have anyone uh, anything else before we get into a couple quick yes or no questions? Oh, since you have Europe, it's a yes time. All right. So this is just simple yes or no answers. Uh, should recreational marijuana be banned in Hopkinton? Is there a maybe option too? <laughs> 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 um, can you repeat the question once again? Uh, should recreational marijuana be banned in Hopkinton? Should be banned. Yes. Okay. Should the age to purchase tobacco be increased to twenty one? Absolutely. Do you feel the school budget should be separated from the town budget on the town meeting warrant? And to be fair, yes. your opponent um, took a little more than, uh, went a little further than yes or no. So you can hedge on this one a little, one, little yeah. bit if you want. Sure. Um, uh, do you mind repeating the question, please? Sure. Uh, do you feel the school budget should be separated from the town budget on the town meeting warrant? Um, I would say... I'll have to give it more thought before saying this, but my quick answer will say uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to give you a couple minutes just to address the Hopkinton community <laughs> and get out any message you'd uh, like to get out there. Right. I mean, you know what? I, um, yep. Yeah, uh, you know, I first of all, I, 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 I want to thank you know all the. The people of Copkington, you know, we have the, the police department, the fire department, the volunteers, uh, people who have s spent endless nights keeping this community safe. And I still want to first of all thank them, including all the board members. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, my, my responsibility as, um, as a selectman will be to protect the, the taxpayer money um, with full transparency. And I will um, hold people accountable, provided we give them the right tools. And uh, I mean, I've spent um, many years managing budgets, so I'll make sure that the budgets that um, you know I work with, uh, with with other board members and make sure that the budget is in line with either the growth or the decline of Hopkinton. But um, overall, you know, I um, you know I bring a lot of experience, and um, um, and I, I, I request if uh, if you can come out on May 15th and vote for me and uh, give me a chance to uh, to prove my skills uh, to the community. Thank you. 
All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us, Aman. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. Thank you very much. For Michelle Murdoch and Jim Kleinkoff, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching.